I promise this is not a ripoff of Jazza's video. I just really want to make art with this because I love their other product. Jazza, our lord, our savior, king of art on YouTube. Forgive me, please, brother. All right, uh, <laughs> let's just roll the intro. This joke has gone on too long. <laughs> this is going to be one of those videos, isn't it? What's up YouTube, I'm J-Rod about Broad Production and today we're taking a look at Art Graphite's Watercolor Graphite. I am beyond excited for this video because I actually took a look at their Needed Graphite and I absolutely love that. If you have not seen the review, it is linked on screen in the description. It was just a super fun video and some super fun products to make. And this thing, I am excited for this because I really love using that Needed Graphite with a brush and painting with it. And I felt like that's really where strength was. So actually seeing the fact that they have a watercolor one, I had to give it a shot. Now this of course sells for $13.99 on Amazon, it does fluctuate in price because I believe I actually paid $12.99 the same price as their actual art graphite. Do keep that in mind when you're looking for it and I can't wait to give it a shot. Packaging, it just comes in a little cardboard tin. You get a little bit about the company. The tin itself is kind of dirty. I don't know why. I know it's not from the desk because I literally just sat it down so and it came dirty so I don't know what that's about but opening it up you can see and I have not done this. Oh yeah that is dirty. You can see some stains right there but you get the tin itself and I like this design. You got a little drawing of character drawing with the actual I assume the watercolor it actually says the company's name there and it's of course watercolor graphite so I do like how they distinguish that hey this is not a normal watercolor so it's not generic it's very unique to them on the back you can see a little barcode so I guess they probably sell this tin by itself without the packaging because the packaging doesn't have a bar oh no it does it does have a barcode okay so I guess they can have two different ways to sell it of course you got the normal safety stuff opening it boom says art graph right there really appreciate that detail they did not have to that just looks cool and of course as you actually use it with your brush and watercolor it's uh it's gonna kind of slightly verily decrease over time but still I like that uh, here's gonna be a quick test at least for me ah uh, that sucks so I prefer tins that they actually the bottoms can snap onto the bottom but here it actually is wider so you can't get that solid lock it can kind of rest either way I'm very excited to get this a test so let's go ahead and do that in our Batman sketchbook wait that's not gonna work at all water cup of paper Oh, that's interesting. I actually like that. First thoughts. One, I really gotta work to pick up a good amount of black. And then when it goes down, the texture of the paper, because this is actual watercolor paper, is kind of pulling at it and creates this look to it. It adds a texture that I'm kind of not digging, especially because I have to go in and smooth it out. That's actually kind of interesting. In a way, it's not bad. Let's really try and pick up the solid black pigment. Oh, I like that. Okay, there we go. Not really sure how I feel about this, guys, because on one hand, I do actually like the ability to kind of go in and get these subtle gray bits. And I do like the ability to kind of smooth it out, take my time with it. But again, I can see how frustrating this can be, how time consuming this can be too, with the watercolor process. And again, I'm not a huge watercolor guy. I have dabbled with some watercolor inks, but still, I expected a little more from here. Either way, I do like what I'm getting. I do like this. It's just gonna be one of those, it's gonna take time to do what I want. With a brush, it's nice. It's not smooth. It's It really does feel like normal watercolor. I did do some watercolor paintings. I think I've shown them on the channel before. But yeah, no, I actually think this is going to be a really fun challenge. Now let's really try and get a solid black because I feel like a challenge I'm going to have at least getting a really good solid variety of tones. As you can see how they like to blend here. So there's like a good good black. What a brush. Let's see for a gray. Okay, it's not bad closer to what I was trying to get about here. Okay, I like that. Now let's really go for that dark tone. Ooh. I would try to create a gradient. I mean, this is me we're talking about here, guys. All right, no, let's do it. Actually, let's do that. And then that literally did nothing. All right, I can work with this. Actually, that's not bad. Hey, look at that. Everybody who's ever done this before is probably thinking you suck and you're right. <laughs> but for the series, this is me. That ain't bad at all. I like this. I think this is actually really cool. If I focus more on watercolor instead of inking, I feel like I could definitely really do more with this than what I what I feel like I can do right now. And this paper, unfortunately, while it is able to absorb a lot of the water and of course, you know, watercolor paper, it does give us this texture that I'm just not liking. I really don't like this golf ball texture here. So I'm gonna have to work against that to really get the piece to look good. Now, what is the piece? Now, I was really excited for actually testing this product out. 
and I specifically penciled a piece with this in mind. And I'm going to show you that piece right now. Today's illustration is of the magician. I actually got the chance to fully redesign her, so you're actually going to see her in detail and not in silhouette. I figured that'd be really good because we actually illustrated her and her golem last time when we took a look at an Artcraft product. So here we go. It's done on watercolor paper, fully penciled, and I'm actually going to ink this piece with some Winsor & Newton India ink that is, of course, waterproof. That way we can get a solid outline for what we're doing, and then we're going to actually go in and start adding the different cell shading, the different layers, the actual watercraft ink. So I think that's going to be super fun. So with all that said, we got a plan of attack, so let's go ahead and roll that super time lapse. Inking this piece was a fun, if not stressful, challenge. You see, out of all my pencils, this one holds a little bit of a distinction. Not only did I actually pencil this piece in full detail on watercolor paper, something I had never done before, but most of the time my pencils tend to sit on a shelf for several months, even up to a year when I draw them, and then after that time when I have an ink that I think would work with it, or sometimes even specially doing a pencil for an ink like this case, I will then bring it out and start working on it. And again, that can be quite a bit of time. This piece, however, had a shelf life of one week. I loved it that much for several reasons. The Magician's a fun character. I got to solidify her design. And on top of that, in my opinion, these are the best hands I have ever illustrated. I love the pose. I love the composition. And those hands came out so well. I knew that I wanted to bring this piece to life as quickly as possible. But there were some challenges. For one, I decided to use my Winsor & Newton ink as it's my favorite ink and the one that I'm most comfortable with. So that I have a little bit of edge on this piece. But adjusting to watercolor paper was slightly difficult as I had never used actual ink with a dip pen on it. Now I have actually used ink on watercolor paper before, but that was with a brush and it was all freehand. So here using it with an actual dip pen led to a bit of an adjustment period as watercolor paper has a lot of texture to it that normal Bristol board doesn't have. So there you go. I honestly probably shouldn't have had this piece start with the head as I messed it up and I had to work at it to thicken the lines to really make up those mistakes. But I just kept working at it and just took my time with it, making sure I got in my groove. And I feel like after a few minutes, I adjusted, I was in my groove, I was making it work, and I was bringing this piece to life. I love how it turned out with just the ink and I actually avoided filling in areas of black only the necklace certain parts of the boot where there'd be overlap certain parts of the hands where there'd be overlap and specifically in the hood to kind of keep that mysterious look along with her eyes nose and her lips which she does actually have black lipstick on which is something that's very unique to her as all my other female characters don't actually have black lipstick so it's actually kind of fun and makes her stand out a little bit more after everything was inked and done I decided to set the piece aside to give it plenty of time to dry and to actually take pictures of it as I really liked how it came out and I may want to revisit this in the future, doing some digital coloring and practicing with some watercolors and just doing other experiments with this piece as I just love the composition. So here you go with it finished ink. Now let's go ahead and dive into the actual watercolor coloring with the graphite. And let me tell you something, this was an interesting experience. Watercoloring this piece was actually really fun and enjoyable, but I did notice a very big flaw in this product that is going to hurt its overall rating. Now, real quick, I have explained multiple times on the channel my methodology for inking and creating art, but for those who are new here, I'll say it one more time. For me, when it comes to inking a piece, I like to identify my areas of 100% black and 100% white. These are vitally important to me. And then I'll identify my areas of gray, which I'll achieve through a multitude of different ways. Hatching, cross-hatching, stenciling, splatter effects, or ink washes. To me, those are important, but those areas of black and white are vital in my opinion. So the gray doesn't take a back seat, but I prefer to get 100% black out of an ink and a product. This is actually why I personally am not a huge fan of Higgins ink because you really do have to work at that 100% black, which I would prefer to actually just have right off the bat. But I knew that with this watercolor, I was not going to get 100% black and I was okay with it. It's watercolor. It's foolish to expect that in a way. So I decided that all my 100% would be done with my Winsor Newton ink. With this mentality in mind, I actually enjoyed the process and I ended ended up using a water brush far more in this piece than I had ever done before. I've used them here and there, but for a full piece like I did with this one, I really enjoyed it and I definitely will be using them more going forward. But I really kind of noticed that, honestly, I could have made this piece the same way with ink washes or normal watercolor. And that's not good because I figured that, hey, this is graphite. I could go in and erase parts of it and lighten it up and add highlights. And that simply wasn't the case. I used three different erasers and they all had very little effects. Now, yes, it was was erasing very slightly, but the amount of effort I had to put into it, I was really scared I was going to damage the paper, and that's not good. Now, I'm not sure if it's actually the properties of the watercolor paper, as I don't illustrate on it very often, or it's just the actual thing with the graphite. I did test it on a separate piece of paper after I finished filming, and I found that it still was very difficult to erase. And to me, that's a huge problem. It should be far easier to erase than it is, and that should be one of the main selling points of this. Because if it isn't erasable, or isn't easily erasable, then it's basically the 
same thing as a normal watercolor, and that's not good. It should have that flexibility because it's made of graphite, but it simply doesn't. And to me, that's actually going to hurt its overall rating because it makes it more like normal watercolor, so why am I not buying watercolor? It should be able to be very different from watercolor, having that unique aspect to it, because if not, then why should I use this over normal watercolor? So even though I do love how this piece came out, I am still frustrated with how the actual product worked and that I wasn't able to actually go a step beyond normal watercolor. But with all that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the piece in all its finished glory. And we're done, guys. Absolutely love how this piece came out. I know I say it a lot, but I really do feel like this is one of my top 10 favorite pieces of the year. It looks awesome. It looks very different from what we normally do. And it's always a joy to illustrate the magician. In fact, I believe this is actually the first time you guys have seen her in full design. This is not a silhouette. This is her look. And this was a super fun piece to make. I went with a very meditative, kind of tree of life vibe with it. And it was just super fun to make. And if you guys like it, it is available on our station account for a $1 digital download. It's that first link in the description down below. And it really does help the channel out. But putting the piece to the side, let's talk about the actual watercolor graph itself. Artgraph has definitely made a high quality watercolor and to say otherwise would be, honestly be a disservice. It is really fun, really enjoyable, and I do like it. But as I mentioned the B footage, and I mentioned it again because some people like to skip it and it needs bearing and repeating, it is very difficult to erase and that's going to hold it back in my opinion. Because this is meant to be a graphite in watercolor form. I should be able to erase it like normal graphite. I use my mechanical eraser. I use a fiber castell pencil eraser i used a tombow eraser and i found that it was very difficult to go in and actually erase now i didn't use my mechanical eraser because i honestly felt like i was breaking the page that it could rip and tear and i didn't want to do that because i loved how this piece came out i didn't want to risk damaging it it was just really frustrating how i couldn't go in and through normal pressure actually erase anything now yes if i did put more pressure i could definitely erase more of it i could definitely get tones to lighten up but if i have to go to the point where i feel like like I'm ripping the paper. That's not good. It should be much more easy to erase. Now, their other product that I checked out, the kneaded graphite, was easier to erase. It, even if you painted with it, it was still easy to erase. So the fact that this can't do that, like what does this offer that normal watercolor also offers? And to me, it should have been able to say, hey, I can do everything watercolor can do, plus I'm erasable, and just didn't do that. And I'm actually gonna give it on my scale of one to 10, a six because of that. It is high quality watercolor. It is really good, but it's inability to be easily erasable really does affect it because at the end of the day if it's not easily erasable then I might as well just use another watercolor but that's my opinion and I'd love to hear you guys in the comment section down below do you think that that is too harsh do you think that this actually deserves to be higher on a scale because it is really good watercolor but again it's just watercolor trying to be more and failing to deliver I'd also love to hear you guys opinions on the piece itself along with the magician's design as this is the first time you guys are seeing it so I'd love to hear what you think of her look and how she is also next time we illustrate her you will be be seeing the golem so look forward to that subscribe to the channel for more art and animation based content and remember i'm j rod of Balbra productions i draw power and my own soul and i even watercolor a little bit with my soul too